I saying, Abby? What's up, Hello. everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Whoa, my lips are dry. I got a spray tan yesterday, and I am cracking. This <laughs> is my friend, Abby Franklin, who I have not seen in... It's been six years. Babies. It's been six we years. We children. Um, children. So we're doing this vlog as like a little holiday treat because it's our reunion. This is literally the first time we've seen each other. It's not like we have hung out previously. This is the first meeting. And so we're just going to like catch up. And before we get started, also, I want you guys to all go and subscribe to Abby's channel. She, as you just heard, is quite a vocalist. These bells are ringing in my ears. We can take, we can take the hat off. There you go. So like, okay, so I remember going to IU. I took this Spanish class and I forget how we met. I think from my perspective, it was like a class full of Mostly bros. Was it mostly bros? <laughs> I honestly don't remember anyone but you. I just know that the uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I just know that I was uncomfortable, like yeah. in general, with just like I feel like making friends or whatever. And there was something about Abby that she was just very friendly and like I was very comfortable around her. I remember there was this I don't I don't know if I'm getting ahead, but I remember there was this one time <laughs> when we went, ahead in the story. <laughs> we went out to Reunion. Yeah. We went out yeah. to Reunion. And we had Pizza. That's no, I remember that. that conversation because you told me that your brother was gay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so I was about that he had just come out too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so I think you did you bring up like me being gay or did I do that? I have no idea how we broached that. I don't know, but anyway, we started talking <laughs> about it and like a weight was, was lifted just... from my shoulders because a part of me was like, I hope she doesn't think that I'm like trying to hit on her or like I think oh, this is yeah, a date. No. Like I hope she knows that I'm just trying to like find a friend. And then you talking about your brother that made me feel so much better. And like you understood me and that was really cool to not only like were you really accepting and made me feel okay, but you like had an experience of your own and understood, you know. And that was really what fresh was for us like. too. Cause like he had just come out um, in our family like right before we both went to school and he's he's my twin so like we're going through life yeah. at the same time we're both going to school and and that was like a really big thing for him so i feel like we met when we were supposed to well, fresh freshman year is so scary yeah. and like the people that acknowledge that it's scary breath of fresh air because mm -hmm. you just are all so awkward and i was a hot mess i'm gonna insert a few freshman year pictures right Please. here and i'm gonna have abby send me some of hers and, oh my like, God, yes. and you're gonna see how what these two little kids looked like because we were <laughs> little kids yeah six years ago i was yeah you looked really different 18. <laughs> well i mean you got you, oh, okay. quite, a, quite a bit fitter i would say i have a fitness channel the oh. fitness special i was telling caleb right yeah. when i got here that the last memory i have of you because i transferred so i went to elon university the rest of my college career mm -hmm. and the last memory i have of you is you just saying you know what, like I went to a few classes. What was the fitness center called? SRSC. SRSC. And you were like, yeah, I think that that would really be great. Like I went to a few classes and I was so excited and I think I'm gonna try and teach. And that was just the last thing I ever heard from you. And then the next time I saw your name- I don't remember that. Was on my Twitter feed as the fitness marshal post-grad and then recognizing you and just no being like, way. no. Like, yes, that is like the only time. Like that was the last thing you said, and that was the next time. That I is you. crazy. It was so magical. I think I actually teared up because that's I was so beautiful. Proud that's of a beautiful you. story. I, just, I know. I really think it is like a beautiful story, and like the fact that we both have the YouTube connection now is insane. Yeah. Okay. First of all, no, we're gonna talk. We haven't even talked about this. I'm just scrolling one day on Facebook and then, oh, oh, going through, oh, all these news outlets are posting this viral chandelier video and guess who's the lead singer? This one right here. I almost shit my pants. I saw like Ashton Kutcher posted it. Oh my God, yes. And I was like, he just, I was literally looking, I was like, oh, what Ashton post today? And then I saw your face and I was like, that was my exact reaction to you. I did not know what to do. I was like, what a small world. And then I like yeah. went to your Facebook and like that was the first time yeah. literally I had seen like your page and stuff since yeah. we talked last uh, in Spanish. And so I was just like, holy sh**, this girl's gone viral. Explain Excuse how you me. ended up on Ashton Kutcher's feed. <laughs> oh my god. So I had just graduated from, from Elon in 2015. Twisted Measure was like my core identity. I remember I auditioned for Ladies First at mm -hmm. Indiana twice and didn't get in either time. And Are you serious? Yeah. 
<laughs> I remember like being so devastated because singing is just my core. Yeah. Like it's completely who I am. Didn't get in. And then right when I got to Elon, got right into Twisted Measure. And then my senior year, I got Chandelier as a solo. I heard okay. Sarah Varela singing it acoustically. Um, love her, obsessed with her, always have been. And she did this amazing cover of it. And when you're in an acapella group, like you don't wanna admit that your life is like pitch perfect, <laughs> but your life is completely pitch perfect. That's a, that's so a dream. You just, you hear songs and they translate in your mind to like insane syllables and just, so I heard her do it and I was like, we have to cover this. Like this is a perfect song. That was my senior solo. Like I became Chandelier Girl my senior year. People didn't know my name. They just knew that I sang you Chandelier. Were the Chandelier Girl. So we like, Twisted Measure knew that it was special. The arrangement was breathtaking. I can't, like, and also I'm gonna link that video there. below so you guys watch that yes. and you will. <laughs> Watch it, please. Um, yeah, it was just magical from start to finish. And I didn't have any plans post-grad. Like, mm -hmm. I knew that I wanted to sing. I was, like, really terrified of going straight to a cubicle. Like, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, if I take a 9 to 5, I'm never going to try this. The day after I graduated, Chandelier went viral. No way. The day after. Like, I remember getting home having, like, a panic attack because I was like, oh my god, what am I going to do? And... Um, one of the girls from the acapella group shared it on BuzzFeed Community, and then it was just hundreds of thousands. It was so making wait, its way in the viral? iTunes chart. Yeah, a BuzzFeed Community. We were number one trending, and it happens. It just happened so fast, and then we were in People Magazine. And I, so I interned at People Magazine, because um, I was a journalism major. Okay. The summer before, the and then the before. summer later, I was in it. it That's was just like, wild. What? <laughs> um... It just so 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 wild, and I have that like frame framed in my room. <laughs> I'm just like, oh my gosh, yay! That's a dream. Are you I know, kidding me? It was. It was great. I mean, you know. It, it just... Wait. So, what did that feel like to you to like come home and just out of nowhere be like, oh, I'm all over the internet? The concept of anything going viral is scary. If it's if it's your dream, if it's like your secret little deep hearted dream, like that you don't tell people about, mm -hmm. and it starts to happen, you know, it's yeah. like. I don't want to acknowledge that this is real yet. Yeah. Like, I'm gonna jinx it. And, like, it was going through it with the whole group. Like, we were all in our group, me, just flipping oh about it. Oh my god. And at first it was just like, okay, it's really getting a lot of views. And then everybody went to sleep. And then I think one day specifically, we woke up and there was more than a million. And, and then it just kept going. Like, just we're like at over in, six in million such a now. short amount of time. Yeah. That's the craziest thing. Well, and I think that's the definition of viral. Like, that's something just, you know. When people like pick it up fire. so fast. It really is like catching fire. Yeah. And it was like on international playlists. And that just <laughs> blew my mind completely open, just all over the floor. That's, yeah. Like, this is international. And it was, um,. That's weird, like, yeah, when you think you can, like, reach people that don't even speak the same language as you. Like, wait, as, when you, like, are a puddle on the floor, like, trying to figure out what to do with your life and right. you don't have any plans, right. and then the next <laughs> second, you're, like, watching videos of French yeah. dancers loving this this video and this rendition, and, and then all of a sudden I was, you know, doing a bunch of auditions, I was flying to New York for auditions, I was... I was moving to New York and Nashville and now... So did that kind of start, like, ignite, like, I guess the path that you decided to take? Or do, was this your yeah. path, do you think, the whole time? or? I think I just needed permission to do it. Yeah. And that's so yeah. stupid. You just no, want to be I like... I totally get it. It's just like, that. you just need that small push and I just feel like... Well, it wasn't, it wasn't small, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but I needed a push and I haven't been able to, to shake it. It's like... It's still, yeah. it's still not the easy path to do something so creative and, and singing is, I mean, any singer knows it is like the, probably the hardest path you could, yeah. you could try and take. But, um, but once you have a success like that, and it wasn't my success either. So that was sort of part of the, the greatness and the weirdness of it. Like my twisted measure is like blew up, you know, yeah. they, they're able to fund just albums and albums and albums of, of like bliss now. Um, but it was so, like, they have that after I graduated. Yeah. So then, knowing that they're just, like, sustaining in this, and then, so I had to sort of start over, like, from scratch. Wow, I didn't think about that. 
Yeah, because it's not my name. Twisted Measure was like, gave me my identity at mm -hmm. Elon. And they gave me a chandelier. And it's pushed me to sort of figure out who I who I want to be. Right. As an as an artist, like yeah. that's a hard brand to give yourself. Yeah, no. For I sure. feel like um, I'm still working on being like Abby Franklin, the brand. Well, that's the hardest thing is like yeah. figuring out how to brand you, like yourself. And you've done so well with that. That's oh. awesome with your star tattoo. It was. <laughs> I love your star Just tattoo. Just with it. That's the hardest thing is like figuring out how to brand yourself. And when you talk about needing a push, it's like I always wanted to perform and I always wanted to dance or. I knew I, I wanted a stage of some sort, uh, but I didn't know how. I also never thought it was attainable, and I never thought that I was good enough for that. Okay. When I came out to California, it, uh, right before my senior year, I was out here on a production internship because I thought I was just going to be behind the camera because I never thought that I was you know good enough to be in front of it. And so I was doing behind the camera stuff, and I was just so unhappy. And I just thought about the rest of my life, and I was like, I would freak out if I had to do it, do this, yeah. but I didn't know what to do, and at that same time, I, when I met you, I was actually dating a guy who, and I think we talked, we talked about that. Uh, we were together for four years up until right before my senior year, and like during my internship is when that all like fell apart, like while I was in California, and so I came home knowing that I hated being behind the camera, yeah. and I also lost like the person I thought I was going to spend the rest of my life with, and so mm -hmm. it took literally everything in my life being broken for me to be like, I have to go for it. Yeah. I have to just do my wildest dream yeah. and put all of my energy into that and just hope for the best. Because before I was just literally just pacing and not eating and just like freaking out about like, what am I gonna do with my life? And the channel wasn't even initially a path for life. It was just more of, I just have to do something that makes me really happy right now because I'm so tired of like, yeah. settling and like yeah. not doing what makes me happy so two and a half years after starting the channel I like I was telling Abby I had no money like I had no income like I had 500,000 subscribers and could not go and like buy my own haircut like I could not pay for a haircut ask Cameron because I had to borrow his money <laughs> but having the drive and just being willing to be uncomfortable for however, however long it takes and like I feel like with I mean for my channel like this is only year three and like things have turned around literally in li a year, a year just from like touring and meeting literally Cameron, like thank you Cameron. Okay. But things can change so fast. It's been such a short time because three years is not a long time at all. Oh, of course not. But <laughs> I mean, just the progression of literally within the past year, my life turning around completely is just like. Yeah, and being in LA, I mean, that's a huge yeah. move. Like I know, I mean, that was it's terrifying. Just culturally, everything is so different here. I mean, I the last. Like entertainment city I was in was Nashville, and I'm not country. Like yeah. I, I don't like <laughs> it. More power to everybody watching who loves country, but it's not it's not my genre. And I just remember being like, this is not my city. Yeah. So it's not just like getting this sort of like spark within you. It's also like everything else matching up. Yeah. And like something like chandelier and and being viral. Like we said, there's no, I mean, there's no formula for that. You can absolutely not plan it. It's like my first YouTube video was Chandelier. Um, and, it's and it's just weird. like, where do you go from that? I mean, so, so starting over was, was really like a super grounding experience. It's like, okie doke. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to start from zero and we're going to work our way up. But it's such a, YouTube is a really cool place. Yeah. Like, also, there's something very interesting about going viral. Mm -hmm. Cause like I was telling Abby, I had an experience last year with that and when there is such an intense, quick amount of attention on something, first of all, it's very interesting, like, how to just take that and handle that. It's also a really weird ego thing, because mm -hmm. when you get so much attention so fast, you're, I feel like humans are not meant to process that much attention <laughs> that fast. It's shock. You're in we shock really, for, like, the majority of the time. It's bizarre. And yeah. so when you experience all of that, and then as quickly as they go viral, they die yes. just as quickly yes exactly i mean i don't know you i want you to talk about your experience because mm. for me that was such like a oh shit, one like no one cares anymore like <laughs> that was it that was one hit wonder yeah where's the next thing coming like i want my fix again it was just such yeah. like a humbling experience to be yeah. like one you can't plan that and that amount of attention yeah. that is not something that you can sustain no, nobody so can sustain yeah. it and you can't i don't know but i feel like and not 
to necessarily compare myself to pop stars that it's like you know you get a number one hit but like yeah th it's it's that it's getting that close to that feeling mm -hmm. and and then you you get that close and it's like oh like oh I get it oh I, I get it this makes sense <laughs> yeah. um and but like I think everyone who is creative and anyone who specifically is like in the in the performing arts, like anyone in the Hollywood, I mean, right? Are we are we Hollywood? I think we are. Hollywood. I think we're Hollywood. <laughs> anyone in that in this like realm of things knows what that's like, and then you you sort of like sympathize for them. Yeah. Because that's like the forever hustle for for everyone. Just it's just maintaining relevancy. Yeah, and like, getting back up there. Yeah. Yeah, but I definitely felt like sort of a burnout at. 22. That's hard. Well, then you also, <laughs> well, because then you start comparing everything you do and you're like, but why isn't this going viral? Like, why? Is, and then you try to start, at least for me, yeah. I've kept trying to recreate whatever made that viral. Like, I would study like that, the Megan Trainer video and be like, what do people like about this so much that everyone wants to watch it? Mm -hmm. But then the more I did that, the less I liked the content yeah, like, I was creating. You, yeah, exactly. Because then it was more for like, a forced. general hit and not like what I actually loved or wanted to do. And I feel like once you realize that, then you're like, good to go. Mm -hmm. I think it's a super important learning experience as a, as a singer because, or just for anyone, it's like, you never want to fight for something that isn't authentically you. And to, to learn that lesson outside of things being super pressurized for me um, was really great because now I'm sort of back in a place where I'm only doing covers that that I know would be really great for me. Right. Rather than just doing some top 40 hit that right. sounds Yeah, that'll awkward. get like, <laughs> like people will <laughs> be searching for that song, so it's like, that's what's right. hard too. It's yeah, like, you gotta, it's a balance. It's a balance yeah. for sure. <laughs> no, it's so exciting that you're here and now like you're, you have your channel and you're starting, like we've reconnected now. And it's just like, this is literally the beginning of, yeah. of everything. It's so exciting, but it's also, it's so scary to be at the beginning because you just like, you want it to progress and you want it to be there, but it's like you can't force it. All you can, if you force it, like it doesn't work. Like you just have to be yourself and just stay on the grind and. And try, but it's, it's like, it's so much about trusting yourself. Yeah. And that's, I think, so important to learn at like our age, mm -hmm. you know? Thank you guys so much for watching. Abby and I reconnect for real in real life. Um, make sure, again, you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'll put all of her links in the description. Follow her on all the socials because she is really freaking talented, as you already know. Again, watch the videos I put down there. Happy holidays, Happy everybody. Holidays. I hope this is out before Christmas. Yes. <laughs> that, would be, that would be like a nice little January treat for everyone.